in part 3, we cover getting started with Piranha to begin the guided tutorial. In this video we will cover the first 4 steps shown on this page. Setting up the Piranha project. Perform exploratory data analysis using the Piranha data inspector. Using a wizard in Piranha to write our base non-mem model. And finally, executing this model using non-mem via Piranha, followed by briefly examining the output with Piranha's tools. In subsequent videos we will work through the remaining parts of this guided tutorial to give you an overview of common steps in assembling your Piranha project. For this tutorial, we will be starting with a data set, PKTab1, which contains simulated plasma concentrations of 100 subjects. Two IV doses of 100 units were administered at 0 and 24 hours, and measured a total of 13 times. All of the input and output files that are generated in this tutorial are also included in the solutions folder. Let's start by browsing to the folder that contains our data file. We can either type the file path, or browse via the folder icon. Note that the path entered here is specific to this machine. When you attempt this for yourself, choose an appropriate location on your computer. The files tab now shows data files in the working folder. In this case, we see a single file, pktab1. Let's create a project name, so we can return to this folder easily. Select the project list. The list shows previously created project bookmarks. If we wanted to return to one of those, we could select it from this list. Instead, we want to create a new project. Let's create a project name by clicking on the Save button. Note that assigning a project name is optional in Piranha, but can save you time later. The Save Project folder window opens. By default it takes the name of the current folder, but it can be changed. The name should be unique. We will save a project with the same name as the folder. Let's take a look at the data file, pktab1. Although there are also toolbar icons and a menu bar, you can do most actions by right-clicking. Let's right-click on the file pktab. Select Open In. And then select Data Inspector. The Data Inspector allows you to quickly visualize your data. It interactively generates plots using Piranha's own graphics engine so you do not need to know R to use this feature. However it also provides a snippet of R code in this window in the bottom right to generate a similar plot in R. To change what is being displayed, click to select the information you want to plot. The code and view are updated instantly, here we see just subject 23. Then we can use shift and select to see subjects 10 to 23. The y-axis can quickly be toggled to logarithmic here, and revert to showing all subjects by selecting show all. It looks like we will start with a one compartment model. It is not just time and concentration data that can be chosen, any column can be plotted against another. Now we have concentration against creatinine clearance. I will choose wait for the y-axis, and simply uncheck this box to revert to a linear y-axis. The R snippet generated can be exported and edited in R Studio, or copied to your preferred editor. Let's see how else we can view the file. Right-click on the data file pktab1. Select Open In. And then select Built-in Editor. This simply shows the columns of data we have as a plain text, or ASCII file. We want to start model building, so let's select the Tools menu. Select the wizard's menu item. We want to start creating a model in Nonmem, so select the corresponding PK model wizard. Then select Run Wizard. Step 1 of the wizard asks for some basic information. The default name for the base model is Run1, but this can be set to your choice. We will call our model R1.mod. The number will automatically increment as we duplicate and develop the model. The model label and description can both be edited to be more informative. Let's change the model label. It is a one compartment model with additive residual error. And change the model description to base model from wizard. The PSN run record template specifies the naming convention for the output. The short template format should be sufficient. Step 1 of the wizard is complete. Click next to proceed. Step 2 is to define the model implementation. 
Here we can easily choose the type of model we want to implement. A one compartment IV model is a good starting point for this data set. Multiple error models are also pre-written. We will use additive for our first model. Step 2 of the wizard is complete. Click next. Step 3 of the wizard is to specify the model estimation. Let's select the estimation method. Select first order conditional estimation with interaction. Uncheck the option to first perform additional IMP sampling, which is not needed for this simple model. Step 3 of the wizard is complete. Click next. The final step of the wizard is to define the input and output. Let's turn on the option for generating a table with the most common parameters. And click the browse button to point to our data file. The default is to look for CSV files. However our data file has no extension, so we will choose to display all files. Select the data file PK tab 1. And click open. Now that step 4 of the wizard is done, click finish. You may need to make a few edits to this template model file. I want to update the input statement to ensure all my columns are read in. And a small change to the model to scale volume units correctly. And don't forget to enter some good initial estimates for residual error, clearance and volume. We will unfreeze Omega and give a starting value of 0.2. Lastly, update the table statements to ensure we have all the data we need for post-processing. Click the Save button to commit your edits. We can now close the model editing window. This row corresponds to our new model. The model name is R1, and we can see the beginning of the description. Let's execute the model using the non-mem button. Now we need to set some options. Turn on the option to copy the results back to the main folder. And then execute the model by clicking the button. Once the commands have finished running, we can close this window. And also this one. Note that the model outputs created are not yet displayed under files. Click refresh to see the latest view of the files. We can now see the non-mem output files. Let's take a look at r1.lst by double clicking. The list file will open in the default editor, in my case notepad. This is the log file of the non-mem run, listing the runtime model code. And results. However it is much easier to review the results in Piranha. Let's ensure the model run is selected. Then select the Estimates tab. This tab quickly summarizes the essential results in one view. We see the theta estimates with their relative standard errors, the omegas, and sigma. Let's move to the Scripts tab. Piranha ships with a large collection of ready-to-run R scripts, grouped into convenient subfolders. Simply expand the folder containing the scripts you wish to run. If you select a script, you will see a brief description and required inputs displayed at the bottom. Let's execute the combined goodness of fit script. Right click on the script name. And then select run script. The status is displayed at the bottom left. The resulting PDF then opens in the default viewer, in this case Adobe Acrobat Reader DC. This script produces four different goodness of fit plots as one document. There are many scripts supplied with Piranha, and you can also customize them further. Returning to the Scripts tab in Piranha, let's collapse the first folder of scripts. We will explore these plots in more detail in later videos. Let's expand the Expose 4 folder. And then expand the CWRES folder. We can see the wealth of scripts accessible in Piranha. Let's collapse that folder. Lastly, you can add your own scripts and folders to easily manage and run modified code. Here you can see a folder called Simon. In this folder I have added a couple of simple scripts. And these scripts can be executed in the same way as the others, either by double clicking the script name, or by right clicking. And then selecting run script. I have now created two plots related to this model run. And I can review these at any time, under the reports tab. I'll expand the R1 entry, 
for the only model we have run. The PDF copies of the two plots that we created earlier are both available here anytime this project is opened. Lastly let's look at the summary of the run recorded in the main window, reading from left to right, the model run number, assigned by Piranha. The column reference indicates the parent model. Because this model was not derived from another model, it is blank. Next we have the description of the model, which we entered when we created the model, followed by the NIMUM calculation method, and the data set that was used to create the model, PK tab 1. Next it tells us that 100 subjects were included, with 1100 observations. The folder name tells us where the data is stored. The next column has the objective function value, and next to that is a column for the delta of the objective function, which is blank, because we only have one model so far. Following that are several columns with flags, the code S indicates a successful non-minimization, and the code C indicates a successful covariance step. A code of B would indicate a boundary problem. Next, SIG4 indicates the number of significant digits in the results. Finally, there are two columns with date and timestamps, indicating the last time the model was changed, and the last time the result changed. Notes can be added by right-clicking on the model, selecting model, and choosing notes and info. You can enter whatever notes you wish in this box. And you can also specify the referencing model. And you can edit the description. After finalizing the changes, we can click Save. With our updates complete we can save the project to be ready for the next step. We will pick this up in the next video. In this video, we covered these four highlighted steps. We first set up the tutorial project. Second, we performed some exploratory data analysis with Piranha's data inspector. Third, we used a wizard in Piranha to write our base non-mem model. Fourth, we executed this model as a simple non-mem run, and we briefly examined the output with Piranha's tools. In subsequent videos we will concentrate on using PSN within Piranha, rather than running non-mem directly.